We'll begin this hour with a cheering story of a COVID-19 survivor. The executive director of Stand to End Rape, Uluwashio Ayodeji Ushuwabi, recently recovered from the novel coronavirus. Today, she's alive to tell a story, but at first she thought she would not survive. She Ushuwabi was the only female among the five recently discharged COVID-19 patients quarantined and treated at the Lagos Isolation Center for two weeks after testing positive for the coronavirus. She's back at home, hale and hearty, and she joins us now on TVC News at 7. Oluwashio, I love the way you announced your recovery uh, on Twitter. On the 30th of March, you had said, I'm proud to inform you that I murdered COVID-19 and I've tested negative twice. <laughs> I have been discharged. Congratulations to you and thank you for choosing to talk to us on TVC News at 7. Thank you so much for having me. So let's begin with what the symptoms really look like because these days almost everyone has a symptom. You feel a slight headache or you sneeze and then the next thing that comes to mind is COVID-19. You returned to Nigeria mm -hmm. from the UK post Commonwealth event and fell ill. What exactly were the symptoms you felt? So, I mean, I must say that different people would feel different symptoms um, at various stages. But for me, um, I had high fever, so which me meant um, I had like high temp temperature and then that escalated to being weak. Um, I lost my appetite. I was coughing. Um, I had diarrhea and I was vomiting. Um, so at first, I didn't think it was COVID. Um, I thought maybe I was stressed, but this is a different kind of stress because I had had like a very busy week in the UK. So I thought that maybe it was due to stress, but I thought, worst case scenario, if I have COVID, it's better for me to take ac action right now, which is to self-isolate, which I did. And then I decided to get tested based on my um, symptoms. So after, you know, the test was done, then it was confirmed that, yes, my symptoms were actually for COVID-19. Quite a long list, a light fever, high temperature, loss of appetite, coughing, diarrhea, vomiting. But can you confirm to yeah. us that you recently returned from the UK? Do you think that was where you contracted the virus? Um, I really cannot tell um, what the location was, but um, I've been in the UK for about nine to ten days and then i returned to nigeria and i was sick on the same day so there's every possibility that i got infected in the uk but i can't you know say or say for certain where exactly um, i got infected first. so you have this very interesting thread on your twitter and the way you had mentioned that you got tested but then you did not get the result of the test 2 a.m yes. at the middle of the night an ambulance appeared you know, at the door of your house. And you waited in the ambulance for about two hours after you arrived at the isolation center. What was that experience like for you? It was a very scary experience because um, I was picked up uh, around midnight. Um, you know, I just got like a message from my dad that was someone had come for me. Um, and so I woke up, you know, got to the isolation center and there was nobody there. It was quiet. You know, the ambulance people were trying to get attention by honking and honking for a long time. And nobody came out, you know. And so they, they were very upset. Um, eventually, someone came out um, and said, oh, what, what's going on? And I explained that I was here because, you know, I have tested positive to COVID. And, and the nurses said they're not aware of my case. So they had to like start dressing, you know, getting my information. All of that process took two hours and I was right there seated in the ambulance all that period. So you mentioned that the nurses eventually came out, treated you like a plague. I'm quoting you now. You sat in the ambulance feeling rejected. But later on, you also shared us some uh, very uh, mouth-watering dishes that you were served during your time in the isolation center what was it like i mean it was a transition so again i can understand that you know it was a new case 
COVID-19 is like a new issue that everyone is trying to understand and deal with. So perhaps, you know, at the time I got to the center, um, they, you know, perhaps, perhaps were not ready at the time or, you know, they were not expecting me. Maybe there was a lapse in communication somewhere, which is fine. But over time, we kind of built a relationship um, where they would bring my drugs, bring my food, morning, morning, afternoon, evening, every day. There was no day that I was staffed at the center. And I must give credit to um, the healthcare workers and the Lagos State government for that. Um, they fed me so much that at some, at some point I had to tell them, listen, if I don't die from COVID, I might die from the food because it's too much for my stomach to eat. <laughs> like it was a lot of food. You know, they were just trying to ensure that we were, we were well fed and our bodies could take in as much as um, possible. Possible, but unfortunately for me, in my case, um, couldn't eat because uh, part of the side effect of the medication I was taking is also vomiting and diarrhea. So I lost my sense of taste. So I couldn't eat at all. I couldn't drink water. So yeah, they did serve us very good food. And you know, I don't want anyone to go to the attention center for the food, but it was good. So you're saying that the least that anyone uh, going to the Lagos Isolation Center can fear is food, uh, given the fact that you were food? fed very well. They will be fed well, but I don't want them to go anyway. Oluwase Ayodeji Oshuwabi, thank you so much for talking to us. And again, congratulations to you.